Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborn, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Friday, July 29th, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, coming to you with the big show, the expanded edition of the Revere Market Insight video, where we take a look back at the prior week, take a look ahead at next week, and update the world famous. 21 over 21 leaders list. Let's get right into it. Market state, we have changed it from correction with short-term uptrend to uptrend as continued strength gave us a solid close above the 50-day moving average and the 21-day moving average crossing above the 50-day moving average on the major indexes. So uh, still under the 200-day moving average. So technically this is a bear market rally uh, but a uh, lot of strength, a lot of positive action, and uh, we shook off negative inflation data pre-market. So that was a, a pretty, uh, pretty key moment to me. So all of the possible inflection points this week being the big tech earnings, uh, the Fed, GDP, and inflation data on Friday all resolved to the upside. So, and not all the news could be considered good, although you could argue that we're in a, we're in a bad news is good news uh, scenario with the Fed. So state of the market uptrend, as I said, let's check over here, the trend gauge leaders still neutral, pointing toward bullish. Certainly there have some have been some leaders that have come to the fore, but I, I've seen a lot better. Uh, short term, 21 day exponential moving average. We went to uptrend on the 20th of July for that. Today, medium term, as I mentioned, above the 50 day moving average, going to an uptrend there, still below the 200 day moving average across the board. So, what happened today? Strong close to a strong month. Check the numbers here. G6 lagged, really no strength today in, uh, in those small cap leaders up a half percent, S&P 500 up 1.4%, NASDAQ 100 up 1.8, Dow up a percent, mid caps up 1.3, Russell up 0 0.65, 6040 global diversified stock bond index up 0.83%, Grotection, our in-house flagship portfolio up 0.72%. This was a day dominated by Apple, Amazon, and Tesla leading the NASDAQ 100 higher, and with tech being such a big part of the indexes, leading the S&P higher also. Let's dive into the charts a little bit. We'll do the tail of the tape and, of course, the 21 over 21 list. But first, let's talk about Revere Asset Management. What we do is trend following when the trend is higher, such as you saw in late 2021 and what you've seen here recently, uh, we start putting money to work if we've been defensive and we keep the money at work as long as the market is acting well. If things start to chop and consolidate, uh, we go more toward a neutral bias if things roll over, such as we've seen several times here. And really, it's been dominating 2022. That's when we have a heavy cash position and go uh, very defensive into protection mode. If you're interested in an approach like this, give me a shout. You can email me, Donna or you can call 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932. Let's get to the tail of the tape and bring up the SP 500. So, tail of the tape, let's start at the top, as I mentioned. Just going to uptrend here, same headwinds, nothing has changed as far as the strong dollar uh, inflation data, uh, bad inflation data today, but the market just shook it off. It wasn't bad, it was worse than expected, and I guess you could say the highest since 1982 is bad, so yeah, the market shook it off. Fed tapering in the balance sheet, reduction, rising interest rates, although interest rates have come down, uh, mortgage rates in particular, uh, even though the Fed is hiking. And of course, we've got the Russia-Ukraine constant overhang. Put call ratio sticking right around a one. Uh, really hasn't been a lot of gyrations off of this one level on put call. VIX, uh, big down week this week, all the way down to 21.3, fear and greed up to 42. We're approaching neutral. Bull case, uh, firmly in the bull case over the, after the last couple of days uh, above the 21, rallying. Uh, bear case, what would ha we have to see to get back to this now would be 
uh, a break of the 21 EMA. Uh, a break of the 50 would give us a yellow light, a break of the 20, actually the 21 is above the 50 now. So a break of that 21, we really would pull the reins back. That would, uh, and we'd be on the lookout for a rally failure there. So some notes today, let's go to the news first. PCE inflation data year over year. Jerome Powell talked in his uh, speech on Wednesday that they pay close attention to this, especially the core uh, year over year. The headline number up 6.8%, core up 4.8%. Those are 0.1% above expectation and the highest since 1982. In no way, shape, or form is this good news, but the market completely shook off this data. We were, the, the uh, pardon me, the um, pre-market futures were higher and they pulled back quite a bit after this came out. But uh, by the time we opened, we opened up about a half percent on the S&P and the NASDAQ buoyed of course by the Apple and Amazon positive earnings reports but uh, we have one mild pullback during the day here was the action little shake up to 4121 a cup and handle intraday base we broke out up to 4140 really surprising strength uh, on the indexes again led by uh, the big three today Tesla up 5.8 percent Apple up three percent Amazon up 10.3 percent from a support resistance standpoint, we opened above this 4040 uh, support level. 4100 was resistance, uh, battled above that all the way up to 4140 before coming back. The pullback got close to this 308.54 support area on the queues. The 314 was resistance. We battled that a couple times, very stubborn, but did close uh, above it. So. Uh, good news there. So uh, leading sectors today. Well, before we get into sectors, let's take a look at all of the indexes. Here's your S&P 500. Here's your bottom. This is actually the third double digit rally for the S&P and the NASDAQ 100 off the lows. The first one being uh, in March. The second one being here in May. Started another leg down then, and this is including. This isn't. I'm not counting from here because of this subsequent pullback above and back below the 21. But just this uh, here, uh, double digit, just quite shy of double digits on the Nasdaq 100. We're above double digits, as that's really been what's leading lately. Uh, you can see this purple line is the 100-day moving average. We closed above it both on the Nasdaq 100 and the S&P today. And you've got the 21, that's the green line closing up through uh, the red line, that's the 50-day moving average. The 50-day moving average is flattening and ever so slightly uh, turning to the upside. Now let's take another peek uh, at the S&P 500 here and let me blow this up, see if we can get a little bit more clear on it. Here you see the... Um, 21 day moving average, the green line clearly moving up through the red line, red line looking flat, but it, it is slightly higher. Here's the downtrending 100 day moving average, battled at it a little bit, but got above it. And um, above we have the 200 day moving average, but we're now within 5% of that 200 day moving average with this double digit move off of the low on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. When tech is leading, this tends to lag, and that's what you can see here. Uh, noting the relative strength making new lows over the last couple of weeks, despite price continuing uh, to chug higher. So really not that good a show by the Dow Jones Industrial Average, but it is within 3.5% of its 200-day moving average as it didn't it showed a lot of relative strength during the pullback uh, from beginning of April through uh, mid-June before flattening out and then tech taking back over. Uh, so this is the closest to the 200-day moving average. Let's take a look at mid-caps very quickly. Uh, up through its 100-day moving average, just within 3.9% of its 200-day moving average, 21 day up through the 50 day, 50 day with a slight turn higher. And finally, the small caps, IWM, the furthest from the 200 day moving average at 7.1%. But uh, the green line, the 21, has curled up through the 50. And uh, both or all five of the averages made it through their 100 day moving average. We, we're pretty uh, far extended up here off of this run, although this was a, a nice Monday, Tuesday pullback before uh, the big pieces of data came out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. 
uh, really strong action, no question about it. Uh, certainly a lot of stocks to pick from, but only a few making really big gains. End phase probably being uh, by far the strongest uh, stock out there. Let's take a look back at the uh, tail of the tape. So from a sector standpoint, oil strong today. Let's take a look at XLE. Exxon and Chevron, good reaction to their earnings report. They're 40% of XLE, and it moved above its 50-day and 100-day moving average here as it's starting to come up the right side of this 30% deep base. Second uh, leading sector today, TAN. Uh, really uh, strong action since this mansion announcement came out that he's going to support a budget that had clean energy uh, funds allocated to it higher high after the gap on tan let's take a look at end phase here very quickly you can see uh, big gap up here on earnings then the mansion announcement followed through in a higher high for the third day after this big gap up if you look at a weekly you can see how it's popped out of this base that it formed uh, did have some nice consolidation in here before popping up. Look at the volume. This is everything that you want in a leader. Uh, we're not in it because we were defensive coming into the um, waiting for the numbers. Uh, big economic and uh, Fed reaction. Wanted to see the reaction before we put uh, significant funds to work. So we missed out on this one, but we are aware that it's a leading stock within a leading sector. Uh, let's take a look at two other ones that are looking pretty good here. Sedge, uh, very similar line of business as Enphase. Uh, nice here. They do report earnings on Tuesday. Array, A-R-R-Y, another one that we're keeping an eye on. Here's, again, the move up on the, the mansion budget deal uh, inside the WIC today. I have an alert set at the high of yesterday. I'd prefer a pullback to this, and this does have earnings uh, coming up, not next week, but early the following week. There are quite a several others I could go through, but they're not as liquid uh, as those three. And I just realized the note to add end phase to the 21 over 21, I don't think I did it. So we're going to have a 22 over 21, unless I can very clearly eliminate one stock. We're going to get to the 21 over 21 here as soon as we finish up here. So what do we do in-house today? Uh, well, let's talk about the weakness, first of all. Uh, bad report from Intel led the SOX to lag today. It was barely positive, but below uh, what the moving averages did. SOX up 0.77% on a much stronger day. Uh, also, relative weakness here, ITB up higher, uh, but lagging the strength uh, of most of the indexes. Biotech, which of course we own IBV. Uh, sorry, XBI, tr making a choice on Tuesday between XBI and TAN, and I went uh, with XBI, clearly not the choice in hindsight, but it's holding on to its 21-day moving average here, two days down despite market action. So you can see the relative weakness uh, here while it's basing, nice tight four-week base. Uh, that it's going on. So that looks good, but it, there is relative weakness there. Uh, China stocks really acting uh, not too, uh, not very well at all. Here's KWeb uh, making recent lows for a while. China was showing extreme relative strength, but now after over the last three, four weeks, that has turned to relative weakness. Staples lagged today because Procter and Gamble re reported um, a, uh, a not so well received uh, earnings report and XLV. Uh, healthcare lagged today also, though it was a nice inside day right around the 200 day moving average. So what we buy today, two buys in TMUS, T-Mobile. Uh, here's your gap up on earnings on nice volume, 121%. Nice consolidation day following, not giving up any of it. And then uh, a higher high on day three today, all pullbacks holding the pivot. This is exactly what you wanna see. Uh, not great uh, sales growth, good earnings growth, and really good numbers uh, in 20. 23 looking forward 186 percent growth pe reasonable at 28 uh like the look of this uh it's shown relative strength off since uh mid-march uh then it put the base in last shakeout here uh 
and it was hurt uh, on AT&T and Verizon earnings until it reported its own earnings, which gave it a nice base breakout, nice uh, flat base breakout here uh, in T-Mobile. We bought uh, two, three percent tranches on this today, so we have a six percent position in T-Mobile, bringing our portfolio adjusted beta to 0.61. First, so basically we're uh, 60 percent uh, long, 40 percent cash is the way you could look at this. Um, bottom line for today, strong close to a strong month, totally erasing June's losses. Let's take a monthly look at the S&P 500. You'll see what I am talking about here. So uh, bad month, June down 8.4%. Nice July up 9.12%. Bounced off this 40-month moving average, just barely below where we closed uh, May. May closed at 41.32. We're at 41.30, so it's like that carnage in June. Uh, never happened. Very nice recovery. Sharp recovery for the month. You can tell that if you look at the daily uh, report, despite some uh, gyrations in here, this harsh pullback. But uh, this was the this was the the key. This undercut day and close at the high put in a hammer that exhausted the sellers, and we've been off to the races since then with uh, just about a 10% gain off the bottom, right around this 200-day moving average. We could really stand to take a little bit of a break here. This 4177 level overhead is resistance. That's the top of this consolidation before two CPI reports ago. Uh, but note that the Nasdaq 100 has broken above. That same consolidation at 314.56, uh, that coincided with this 100-day moving average. So there was two levels of support, uh, resistance today, right around that 314 to 314.50 area. We battled it multiple times, uh, rejected it multiple times. I think my 314 alert went off uh, a couple of times here. We were above it early in the day. We got above it here. We got above it here. Then we pulled back, tested it, it held, and we had a nice rally into the close. So we want to see that 314 area hold on any pullback as uh, that's the top of this consolidation zone here on the NASDAQ 100. So I think that covers everything. I'll uh, scroll up here a little bit if you want to pause and you see how we're chipping away at all these resistance levels uh, one at a time all throughout um, July, going back to reclaiming this thir this big 3,800 area, which was a huge resistance area. We we kept testing it, banging on it, it held. We got all the way down to 3,740, uh, bounced off there, and then we just started trudging our way higher over the past two weeks. Uh, we don't make any predictions that the bear is over, or that we're gonna continue. Uh, the numbers aren't good from a macro standpoint, uh, but the market doesn't seem to be caring right now. Uh, Jerome Powell seemed to inspire some confidence uh, in his address on uh, on Wednesday after the Fed, and then the good reaction to earnings uh, from Amazon and Apple, uh, and then the GDP number was taken in stride, as was the inflation data this morning, so we, we're not gonna argue with the market. We've continued to put a little bit of uh, money to work, and, um, had some nice gains for the week, not as strong as the indexes, but then again, we're not as down as far as the indexes. So let's get to the 21 over 21 here. We've got 11 sectors and 21 industry groups. That's how we get our diversification. You don't have to buy emerging markets. You don't have to buy foreign stocks. When the market is acting fine, diversify within the best acting sectors, set your stops, let your winners run, and you can do okay. I'm going to kick it off with end phase, as I said, forgot to add this, but this is the strongest stock in the market. Absolutely has to be in the 21 over 21 list, but this is one of the ones that we really want to monitor, see how it reacts to, to the sedge earnings uh, and a couple other solar earnings uh, upcoming next week, but great numbers here, very volatile and choppy while the market was sorting itself out, but this is an unequivocal uh, earnings reaction, 317% up 18% on the day. On the 27th, this is the leader right now. Uh, CDNS cadence acting very strong since its earnings report needs to put a handle in here. Amazon, this was the uh, added after this gap up here. Uh, this is going to be a key for the market. We want to see how <clears throat> whether the high of this bar or the low of this bar gets taken out. That could be a key to uh, the the movement in the market. Note that they actually lost money for the second straight quarter. 
and sales were only up 7% for the second straight quarter. Those are not great numbers, but Amazon looking forward is something that can really uh, lead a market. It's got its 20 for one split in the uh, rear view mirror and now it's above that uh, split level, that 129 level filled this gap here today. Uh, it's really between hanging out between this gap area here uh, but from the end of April, let's see which direction uh, it takes. Uh, let's talk about the three stocks that got booted off very quickly. I alluded to these in the podcast or uh, maybe in last night or in the video, Wednesday's video, I can't remember. Uh, Chewy, bad reaction, gap down in sympathy with Amazon, uh, with uh, Walmart's earnings and hasn't recovered below the 21 and the 21 has rolled over. Uh, Ollie, another retail stock, bad reaction again, uh, started showing some weakness after it hit this plus 20 to 25%. That's why uh, the O'Neill rule to take profits in this area paid off here. It's given up basically most of the gain from the pivot breakout. So that was removed also, as well as Qualcomm, which closed above the 21, but gapped down and made a lower low after its earnings report. Uh, showing resistance at this 200-day moving average, lack of relative strength. There's a lot better semiconductor, excuse me, semiconductor setups. So we took that off the list. Uh, and the three that were added, Enphase, CDNS, Amazon, and T-Mobile, which was on uh, prior, uh, in prior weeks, came off last week with the close below the 21, but back above it, and we bought it today. So T-Mobile looking good there. DR Horton, a home builder. This is kind of a, um, a a group that people don't think should be doing well, so kind of a contrarian play. Uh, not showing much relative strength recently, uh, but good reaction to its EPS consolidating that, and we do want to be diverse in the 21 over 21 as it lets us have our finger on the pulse of what's going on from a sector rotation standpoint. Fortinet, ugly day early in the week, decent recovery, uh, closed back above the 21. Software security uh, is one of the leaders. Let's see what happens to it when it has earnings next week. Apple, on the list coming into this week and didn't disappoint with the gap above the 200 day moving average on earnings, relative strength at a new high. Apple holding the 200 day moving average is a very low risk entry and at the top of our list for next week, but we are somewhat extended on the NASDAQ 100 and Apple has made a pretty strong move up here. We'd like to see a little bit of a handle put in here. Silvergate, we own this, bought this this week. Uh, this was a big move up on earnings follow through higher volume the following day, which is very rare. That really got it paying uh, me paying attention to it. So 22% uh, gain on the earnings day, another 16% the next day, put in this nice short little cup here coming into the 100 level. Uh, let's see if we can get anything going with this. This one is one that really moves when it moves. Tesla, uh, really disappointed with the way I handled this. Uh, took, taking risk off going into the Fed, didn't put it back on after the earnings reaction, and it's really uh, had three fantastic days. Uh, unfortunate that I'm not participating in this right now, but there, if it continues to lead, there will be multiple opportunities to get back in. Roblox continues with its tight action as does BMBL, a little bit stronger on BMBL. Uh, Lanthius Holdings, uh, all-time high close. Bros, uh, not any volume coming into this, but really great fundamental story, earnings in 12 days. Um, let's see if this can get uh, more beverage momentum going. We've got two, beverage, two other beverage stocks on here, Celsius. Uh, another one on a very tight day that I stopped out as a risk reduction uh, tactic and then three days to the upside after that. Not happy to see that, but again, uh, there'll be multiple uh, opportunities to enter this if it's going to. Uh, really right now, it's just coming up the right side of its base. Uh, could put in a little bit of a handle here and pull back if the market pauses for a little bit. Monster Beverage also acting great. It's the uh, revenge of the energy drinks after this lower volume pullback. Uh, earnings next week. Let's see how that does. CNC leading the continuing to lead the strong managed care group, putting a handle in after its earnings report. BJ has recovered nicely after the gap down uh, with Walmart. Note the relative weakness over the last three days, but this is uh, 
in that group, people have to spend money and they're going to spend it where they get the best deals. Uh, BJ's is part of that. Hammer after this big gap down, lower volume pullback the last three days right above the 21. Uh, BJ's and Costco are two that we're looking at as possible buys. GTLB continues uh, below the 21, back above the 21 by the end of the week. Stay of execution. PWR after this big shakeout. This was, this was the big mansion shakeout here when first he said he wasn't cooperating with budget, then the gap up on the budget news, earnings next week. This is an ugly day, though. This is, this is not what the solar stocks did. This isn't a solar stock. It's in uh, the building heavy construction group, uh, but it is clean energy related. But not a good day today on this 71% volume down 4.5%. So right now, this is uh, a failed base breakout. Well, it's not failed. It came right back to the pivot. It's got to get brick below the 21 in order to fail uh, the pivot minus 7% rule. SWAV shockwave continues to trend higher. American Tower trying to break out here. Believe me, it is when it comes up. So nice day Thursday, follow through right up to the pivot, paused a little bit there. Uh, this thing really runs when it runs. And finally, Eli Lilly, very tight action over the last four or five weeks above the 21. Anytime it tries to dip below the 21, it's working. Uh, earnings next week as uh, earnings season continues, we'll see how that plays out. And that is your 22 over 21 lists. One of them will be cut uh, sometime next week. So uh, that's going to wrap it. As always, love to hear feedback from you. Email me, Don at RevereAsset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. I'd like to wish uh, best wishes to Hunter. Uh, had a great time working with him in the almost two years that he was with Revere. That time just absolutely flew by. And I'm, and I'm very, uh, very much looking forward to working with Michael Ramos out in California uh, as he joined the Revere team. And um, we're, we're, uh, we'll probably be, well, not probably, uh, in time, we'll certainly be adding uh, more people to the staff. So that's going to wrap it. The, the month ending and the week ending, 729. Uh, Still two days left, obviously, but they're not trading days. But wrapping it up, remember, it's not how much you make. It's how much you keep. Bringing you the facts. This is Don Vandenborg. Have a great weekend, and thanks for listening.